Hello there. My name is Sarah Thunga Matthews, and I'm going to be reading from my novel, All This Could Be Different, about 30 pages in, because I've been reading the opening all the time. <laughs> August turned ripe as a fruit. Sneezeweed and tansy brightened the sidewalks, and my mother called to say my uncle died. Acute pancreatitis and cirrhosis of the liver. In the last year, his eyes had turned the color of old urine, his calves swelled to balloons. They were keeping the body refrigerated until every possible Amai and Achayan from Dubai to Brampton, Kolkata to Scotland, could fly back to put him in the cemetery. The timing of my uncle's croaking was notable, on the heels of our harvest feast, his funeral falling on its most auspicious day. If I had been there still, I would have taken a great and malicious pleasure in eating the sadhya as though the day held only something to celebrate. Would have shoveled red mata rice and coconut parupa and beans thorin into my mouth like a greedy little boy. Asked for seconds of sweet creamy piasm over the wails of the mourners. To my mother I said stiffly, Adesheri, sorry to hear this. My mother was crying. You are a very cold person, she said to me in our language. I had not offered to come home, to support my parents, to support her. His whole life, my uncle had bullied her. Once in a drunken tantrum, he had slapped her in front of my father, who summarily threw him into the rhododendron bushes. After that, my uncle decided that I was a more strategic target. The memories tumbled back to me, rolled into the other like socks. My uncle waiting by the elementary school's iron gate. How I would run to him, the school bag flack, flapping up and down against my thin back. To the person who paid me the most attention, who laughed at my every joke, who said he loved me. A darting creature with huge eyes, Monchine was. Wispy hurricane of hair circling the bare eye of his scalp. He would play Legos with me, then stamp on the house I had built. When, I was when he was especially jobless, he would take me on his long ambling walks and pinch my nipple hard if I dawdled. There were other things, and I did not for a second wish to, wish to dwell on them. And here my mother was, weeping for this useless man. In the background, I could hear the opening music of the Canada serial my grandfather liked to watch from the bed. Thank God I was now far away from the people who had hurt or overlooked me, the neighbors and cousins who lionized my parents when they achieved a modicum of success and visibly scorned them when it had been taken away. I would never, if I could help it, live there again. Yes, I said acidly to my mother. You are correct, very astute of you. Once the phone went quiet, I felt a wicked pang. Thinking of my parents living two oceans away with their slackening bodies, their private burdens. In silence, I wiped the kitchen counters, wrung the rag out in the sink. Thank you. <laughs>